Dr. Stevens, some of my constituents have come to me and said that remote learning is negatively impacting the emotional and mental well-being of our students. Uh, they also claim that it has the potential to stunt their academic growth. In my previous efforts on this subcommittee, I have worked in conjunction with colleagues across the aisle and with outside stakeholders to provide STEM education. Opportunities to rural and low income communities have clearly been affected by this. Uh, many of these STEM programs require an in-person lab class. While teachers are doing their best to adapt during these difficult times, there are some learning experiences that cannot be replicated virtually. Moreover, a recent study shows that 30% of all K through 12 public school students live in homes without proper internet connections and without suitable devices for at-home learning, making the attempt to stimulate the hands-on STEM experience even more difficult. My question is, can you speak to some of the financial challenges disproportionately facing low income and rural families and how outdated and anecdotal evidence, as mentioned in your testimony, impact the policy seen before us today? Yeah, thank you for that, that question. Um, I actually did a, a webinar uh, a couple of weeks ago on with four with two teachers and two administrators on teaching in the pandemic. They talked about what it was like to teach um, on video all day every day. Um, it's very difficult for the teachers. Um, the, the what you're describing in terms of the students that they are serving are are fall into the category of students you're describing who many, many children do not have the support and the technological resources at home to, to enable their effective participation in remote learning. Um, also, as you mentioned, the, the, the impact on children's emo social emotional well-being, um, it seems pretty clear that it's having a negative impact. Um, because the schools are controlled by the state and local level, um, it, I, I don't, I really, I just, I really don't know how quickly we'll be able to address this, this, this problem nationally. If we're thinking about what we could do in the meantime, I mean, we can continue to support states and localities in opening their schools. Um, there are a couple of there. A couple. England has just launched a really wonderful national national tutoring program. There are a couple of states um, in in the U.S. that have launched um, tutoring programs for kids. Um, I think that is worth looking at. I think that, as I mentioned before, um, look, looking at partner, figuring out how to bring after school high quality after school organizations on board. I think that makes sense to look at while at the same time continuing to work with states and localities to figure out what they how to how, what they need to uh, to open um, as you know the federal government um, just doesn't have very much control over schools uh, so I think that the, that what you that, that that looking at supporting other kinds of solutions um, may be also worthwhile thank you doctor and uh... Madam Chair, I see I've got under 40 seconds left, and I know there's a lot of folks asking, wanting to ask questions, so I will yield back the balance of my time, and I thank you. 